This will be a quick recording on study guide number one on the anatomy of the heart. So the heart is found in essentially the middle of the thoracic cavity in an area called the mediastinum that we find between the lungs and also in the mediastinum we find the great vessels, the superior vena cava, the uh, ascending and arch and part of the descending aorta and the pulmonary trunk. The heart is surrounded by serous, a serous membrane called the pericardium and as all serous membranes it is double layered so we have an outer or parietal layer and we have an inner or visceral layer. The outer layer can also be called uh, or subdivided into the fibrous and serous portions so the parietal pericardium has a fibrous part to protect, anchor, and prevent overfilling, and the serous portion produces the fluid that will fill the pericardial cavity for lubrication. This is a good video to show how the heart um, goes into the pericardial cavity and, and how it is in contact with the serous pericardium. So this would be the parietal here on the outside, and then this would be the visceral here that's actually touching the heart. Um, that visceral pericardium can also be called the epicardium or the outermost layer of the heart. Uh, many times when you look at it, a uh, heart in the cadaver, or if you've dissected a sheep heart before, that, that you will see fat on the surface of the heart, and that's okay. It's there to protect it. It's not going to affect any atherosclerosis or anything like that. The thickest layer of the heart is the myocardium, made up of the cardiac muscle, the cardiomyocytes which makes the fibrous skeleton of the heart and the endocardium is simple squamous epithelium then that lines the chambers and covers the valves and so here's just a picture showing the fibrous and serous portions of the parietal pericardium and then the epicardium or the visceral serous pericardium and the myocardium and the endocardium and then this just shows the way the skeletal muscle not skeletal muscle the cardiac muscle is organized with the atria and then here into the ventricles all right, so into the study guide, um, the heart is essentially two pumps. We have a pump for pulmonary circulation on the right side of the heart, and we have a pump for systemic circulation on the left side of the heart. So the right side receives the blood from the body and sends it through the tricuspid valve and onto the right ventricle, which will then send the blood out to the pulmonary trunk, which will bifurcate into the two pulmonary arteries sending the blood out to the lungs and coming back through the pulmonary veins into the left atrium through the mitral valve into the um, left ventricle and then out the aorta and its branches to the rest of the body. Um, so the heart is two pumps, one for pulmonary circulation and one for systemic circulation. The pressure difference between the two sides of the heart, uh, the pressure on the right side of the heart is very low. Um, because we're only pumping blood to the lungs and so the lungs need to have very low uh, peripheral resistance in them as well and so we want very low blood pressure in the lungs and so the, the pressure on the right is low whereas the pressure on the left is is much higher than what we find on the right so that you can pump the blood systemically okay um, the last question of the part of your study guide find a picture before I go too far I don't have a picture of the surface of the heart but you can see um, on the heart surface itself that we have uh, coronary arteries and cardiac veins the coronary arteries are going to leave right here through the ascending aorta and go on to the right side of the heart and the left side of the heart and take blood um, to the heart muscle itself and then bring then the cardiac veins will bring the blood back from the heart muscle tissue uh, the capillary beds back uh, along a horizontal vessel on the back of the heart called the coronary sinus which will then empty into the right atrium as well. So the heart muscle will receive its oxygen through the uh, coronary arteries. Okay, so um, as far as oxygenation of the blood is concerned, um, right side of the heart is deoxygenated, left side of the heart is is oxygenated so um, right atrium tricuspid valve right ventricle is deoxygenated and then left atrium mitral valve and left ventricle are oxygenated 
Okay, so we did all of that. Okay, so we're going to take a really quick look. You've done quite well as far as um, uh, contrasting and comparing skeletal muscle to cardiac muscle. And so I'm just going to hit a few of the highlights if we look at this diagram. Um, this is cardiac muscle, a photomicrograph of that. You can see between the cardiomyocytes, um, sometimes they're long, sometimes they're short and stubby little things. Um, but between them, you're going to find these squiggly lines called intercalated discs. And, um, and, and they can be quite extensive in their, in their branching. As, well, they're not branching. Um, in, their, in their curviness, as you can see right here. And, and these intercalated discs are important for two reasons. One, because of the, the intense mechanical activity that's going on between them as they're contracting, we need to hold those, those cardiomyocytes together. And so we've got some structures that will hold them together. We have desmosomes pictured right here, which are very much like rivets um, that are complicated uh, cell junctions. And with these intermediate filaments that are here, we also have fascia adherens uh, that's on your list that will um, connect the actin filaments um, and also hold the, the cells together. The other structure that's important are the gap junctions that we find here. We have these little connexin proteins that form channels through the cell membrane. And what they're going to do is allow ions to travel between the cells instead of having to have a depolarization that's going to happen along the sarcolemma of the cardiomyocyte. So, um, so uh, transmission of an impulse, I shouldn't call it an impulse, uh, transmission of the ions, then the sodium ions, and calcium ions can travel between the cells instead of along the outside of the cells. Nucleus, you can see, is located um, out here between the myofibrils on the edge. They're not necessarily as peripheral as you see in skeletal muscle, um, but they're gonna, you're going to have a single nucleus, whereas a uh, skeletal muscle fiber, you're going to find many nuclei. Um, in the T-tubules, their organization is a little bit different than what we see in skeletal muscle. If you remember, we had um, the terminal cisternae on either side of a T-tubule forming a triad so that we would have um, uh, three units making up a, a T-tubule system here in a skeletal muscle, but in a cardiomyocyte, we're going to have a T-tubule and then we're going to have what's called a uh, just one connection, so we have what's called a dyad, um, but I don't think that that's really significant to to the uh, understanding how cardiac muscle contraction works. Still has sarcoplasmic reticulum that's going to store um, the the calcium, and lots and lots and lots of mitochondria that you can see here are represented very abundantly through the cardiomyocytes. But the most important thing to remember is that the cells are not parallel to one another as we have in muscle to skeletal muscle tissue, even though they're all striated, um, but they branch. So we have these branching fibers. You can see how they branch right here. And it's significant that these branch and with these intercalated discs that, um, that the heart functions or contracts as what we call a functional syncytium. And what that means is that the cells are going to act as one. We're going to act as one big giant cell. So when the atria contract, they're going to contract simultaneously because they're all interconnected with one another and they're all receiving the same signal to contract through the gap junctions in the intercalated discs. Um, and then all the ventricles will contract simultaneously. Um, and so we get good pumping action, atria pumping down to the ventricles, ventricles pumping out of the heart. Um, to where they need to go. Oh, and then sarcomeres. I forgot to talk about that. So the sarcomeres are, again, arranged very similarly in their myofibrils as um, you see in the skeletal muscle, and that's why cardiac muscle tissue is also known as striated muscle, um, because we do have the, this organization of actin and myosin, um, thick and thin filaments, Z-discs, M-lines, H-zones, I-bands, A-bands. Um, it's all going to be the same organization that we had in skeletal muscle. So that's about it for this video.